A hey class, welcome back to the unit on right triangles and trig. We're starting our second video for trigonometry. Uh, maybe we can wrap it up in two videos, we'll find out. But uh, we're coming back to trig, is what we started with in the last video. And hopefully you remember we discussed what are the trigonometric ratios. We learned about sine, cosine, and tangent. Uh, so hopefully you remember that from the previous video. If not, uh, you're going to have to watch that because I might go a little bit quick, which for me is still slow because I talk too much. But, uh, but let's jump in. We're going to use now these trigonometric ratios that we learned about in the previous video. So how, how do they work? How can we use these trig ratios uh, to work? So here's an example. We have a, a landmark question about the Leaning Tower of Pisa. And uh, it was close to the public due to safety concerns. The tower reopened in 2001 after a 10-year project to reduce its tilt from vertical, whatever that means. Engineers' efforts were successful and resulted in a tilt of 5 degrees reduced from 5.5 degrees. whoop de doo Suppose someone drops an object, like an egg, <laughs> that'd be messy, from the tower at a height of 150 feet. The question is, how far from the base of the tower will the object land? And we're going to round to the nearest foot. So what is happening here? We have this diagram of the Leaning Tower of Pisa, and uh, the question is about a tilt of 5 degrees and uh, a height of 150 feet. So what we're looking at is a right triangle, because height always means perpendicular to the ground. Okay, So height always means perpendicular to the ground, 150 feet high. There's our angle of tilt. What's the question asking? The question is asking, how far from the base? So we're going to look for this particular measure right down there, the, the short leg. That's what we're going to look for, okay, the short leg. So the angle in question is 5 degrees. The angle in question is up here. We're given the height, and we're looking for the short leg. So the question is, how in the world are we going to find it? Well, let's, let's name the hypotenuse real quick. So hopefully you realize that this is a short leg, and this is a long leg. That would be good to understand. And so let's name the hypotenuse. We'll call it C just because. Because I, I want to make sure that we understand which trig ratio we're going to look at. So remember what we're looking for. We have a height. We have an angle. We're looking for this measure down here. We have our three choices. Okay, So we can talk about sine of the angle. The angle is 5 degrees. So we would say this, sine of 5. All right, the sine of 5 is opposite over hypotenuse. The sine of 5 would be x over c. Is that helpful? for our particular question? And the answer is no, that's not helpful at all. Is it the cosine of 5? OK, so would we be using the cosine of 5? Well, what is cosine? The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. The adjacent is 150, and the hypotenuse is c. Now, that's, that's going to be kind of helpful, um, but uh, it doesn't help us answer the question, right? We, we need to figure out uh, this distance here. Okay. And then lastly, we can talk about the tangent of, of 5. Now, the tangent is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. So the tangent is going to be x to 150. See, now we're talking. But the problem is, Mr. Katz, how do we know which one of these things works? Well, remember from the previous note, a trigonometric ratio is not only a ratio of segment lengths, it's also an operation. It's something we can do to an angle measure. So check this out. Do you see these things here, sine of 5, cosine of 5, and tangent of 5? They all have values. They all exist. These are numbers that exist because the sine is an operation we're doing to the degree measure of 5. How does that work? Well, we can have 5 in our calculator, and we can take the sine of it. Look at that. That is a number. We can, we can operate the number 5 by taking the sine, pretending the 5 is a degree measure. The, it has a value. The sine of 5 has a value. OK? Isn't that cool? I hope so. Well, is the cosine of 5 a value? Absolutely. We can have 5 as our value of a degree. We can take the cosine of it. And look at that. That's a value. It's different from the sine, correct? I hope you understand that. And then lastly, we have the tangent of 5. Is that a value? Yes, it is. How do we find it? There's our degree measure of 5. We take the tangent of 5. And look at that. That's a different value as well. 
Okay, now hopefully you see that the tangent and the sine are off of, awfully close. You might wonder why that is. Well, because the sine is the opposite of the hypotenuse. The tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. In this particular triangle, these two distances are kind of close. You know, not the same. Clearly, the hypotenuse is going to be the longest. But, but anyway, some neat math there if you're paying attention. The point is, each of these has a value because what we learned in the previous video. A trig ratio is also an operation. It's something we can do to a number uh, because it's in relation to an angle measure. So these not only are ratios, these are operations. That's kind of a neat thing. Anyhow, back to the question at hand. Which one of these are we going to use to find the measure of the, of the distance from the base? Hopefully by now you're seeing it's going to be the tangent operation. So that's going to be the winning operation. If we're looking at this particular example, we're going to find that the tangent of 5 is equal to x over 150 feet. Okay, So that's how we can solve for x. Now how do we solve for x in a situation like this? If x is being divided by 150, how do we solve for x? Clearly, or hopefully clearly, pre-algebra, we multiply both sides of the equation by 150. And if we multiply both sides of the equation by 150, we will find out that x is equal to 150 times the tangent of 5. Okay. Now the tangent of 5, as we showed, has a value. This is a thing that we can do to, uh, to a degree measure. We are rounding to the nearest foot, so the rest is calculator work. So how does this work? Show you how this works in the calculator. So we got our very equation set up. What are we going to punch into the calculator? Well, it's 150 times. Okay, so 150 times the tangent of 5. What do we push? 5 tan. Okay, and that's the tangent of 5. And we get our equal sign, and the value is 13.123. Okay, but the uh, the question was to round to the nearest foot. So here's 13.123. What is the nearest foot? The nearest foot is 13. So how far? From the base of the tower, will we drop that object? We would drop it 13 feet from the base. Okay, and that's how that works. So the, the key takeaway is to remember that the trig ratio is not only a ratio, it's an operation. Kind of neat. So that's how that one worked. If that was confusing, rewind, try again. But in the meantime, let's do some more stuff. All right. So here we go. We're going to find a leg now. Here's a, here's a basic, uh, basic right triangle. We're going to find the value of W. Right? The angle in question is 54. Okay? The angle in question is 54. Now remember, when we take a trig ratio, a trig function of that degree measure, it's a value. The sine of 54 has a value. The cosine of 54 has a value. Right? That's the sine of 54. Here's the cosine of 54. Here's the tangent of 54. They all have a value. Okay? Uh, and the question is, if that's the case, how are we going to find W? Well. Where is W in relation to this angle? Hopefully you see that W is opposite of the angle. Okay, It's the opposite leg. So if W is the opposite leg and 17 is our hypotenuse, then what function will we use on that 54? Right, That's the question. Hopefully you realize the function, remember good old chief Sokotoa. <laughs> Good old chief Sokotoa. So the function that deals with opposite and hypotenuse is going to be the sine function. That means the correct trig function to use on this angle is the sine. So we are going to take the sine of 54. And what is the sine of 54? It's equal to w over 17. OK, and that's how we're going to find the value of w. OK, so remember, it's a thing that we can do to a degree measure. right? Something we can do to an angle is take a trig function of it. So anyway, the sine of 54 is w over 17. So how do we solve for w? We multiply both sides by 17. And we find that w would be equal to 17 times the sine of 54. And that's where the handy dandy calculator enters. OK, so we have 17 times the sine of 54. 17 times, and then you hit 54, and then the sine function. And that's equal, 13.753. But we're rounding to the nearest tenth now, okay, so we look at our value, 13.75. Oh, 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 uh-oh. 0.75, the 5 knocks that 7 up to an 8. 
So we are dealing with W equaling 13.8 units. Okay, so uh, that's how using the function works. Let's practice some more. All right, so the next question is then, uh, what is the value of x in the right triangle below? Round to the nearest tenth. There you go again, the tenth. So here's our angle measure. Uh, it's 70 degrees. Now, are we dealing with a right triangle? Yes, because the question said so. So make sure you're doing that. And, and make sure you see what that makes. That makes 18 the hypotenuse. Okay, 18 is the hypotenuse. But our measure, our angle in question is 70 degrees. That's what we're looking at. Okay, so the angle measures 70 degrees. Here's the x we're trying to find, which in this case is the opposite leg. Now that we know the now that we know the angle we're dealing with, it's the opposite leg, and 18 is of course the hypotenuse, right? So uh, what are we going to use? We have an opposite leg. We have an hypotenuse. Hopefully you realize the trig function we're going to use is the sine function. So we will be taking the sine of 70, and the sine of 70 is x over 18. Okay, so just like before, we're going to multiply both sides by 18. And then we find out that our, that our x, our missing side, is going to be 18 times the sine of 70. So what do we do? Calculator. Boom. Right? So I, dude, when I was in school, we had a table of values. That was fun. Anyhow, 18 times the sine of 70. There's our value. It's, it's 0.9396. That doesn't seem right, does it? I'm going to try that again. 18 times 70 sine equals. Ah, there it goes. All right, that's better. 16.914 blah, blah, blah. And we're rounding to the nearest tenth. Okay, so we have 16.91. That ain't enough to round it. So it's not enough to change it. So it's going to be 16.9 units. So our x is 16.9 units. Now, does that make sense? It better because it can't be any longer than 18. It's a good way to check real quick. Does it make sense? Is it longer than our hypotenuse? No, then we're good to go. Okay, so that's, that's how we do that. All right, now I mentioned I'll try and finish this in two videos. I don't think I'm going to because the next is uh, inverse ratios. <laughs> I'm going to save that for our next video. So I I'll pause for here. That's, uh, uh, that's enough for right now. What we'll do is come back for video three when we start using inverse ratios. So hopefully you understood what happened uh, using trig ratios as operations. I will talk to you guys later.